Okay, one of the biggest questions that we're getting right now, are the looming foreclosures actually gonna have a massive impact on our real estate industry? Are the looming foreclosures gonna bring mayhem and bedlam, change it from a seller's market to a buyer's market? Are we gonna crash and burn like we did in 2008 through 2010? Those are the questions that we're gonna to answer today. We're gonna to go through some market updates, but before that, hey, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Uh, make sure that uh, if you have questions, you ask questions because other than Sunday, we get back to you in about 30 minutes. There's no strings attached. It is 100% free and it is current. It is today. Today is July 17th. Today is July 17th. We will not be discussing uh, April. We will not be discussing January. We will be discussing where we're at today and where we're going to be going uh, in the next uh, Q3 and Q4. And of course, the remainder of Q2. Well, I guess Q2 is over. So three and four would be the only ones left. Hmm. All right. So with that, let's have a little bit of fun. So we're going to go through a couple of things. One will be the metrics and two will be where we're going as far as interest rates because i have to tell you there's been some pretty crazy things going on in fact let's do this in reverse normally we do the market but i want to do interest rates first why because super important if you're about to do a refinance you need to know this and right now your birthday your christmas your your celebration your gift from the government came early because the Federal Housing Finance Agency, FHFA, that's a mouthful, uh, dropped the refi fee. So you might remember they uh, instituted a refi fee uh, because of, well, the mayhem and bedlam that was happening with COVID. Uh, and they suspected that it was going to have a catastrophic effect on people who had mortgages, getting mortgages. And so they were adding a 50 basis points, half a point, uh, 50 basis points to the cost of a refinance, which again was passed on to whom? Yes, the banks, but ultimately to whom? Yes, you. So you paid more. So get a load of this. Look at rates. Immediate boop, drop below 3%. So par pricing today is 2.875. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Now, if you also take a look at it, at uh, 2.125 with one point, you can get a 7-1 mortgage. Remember when we talked about if you're not going to be in that life, uh, in, in that house for your the entire life, like forever, if you're going to be there for, say, 10 years or less or seven years or less, don't pay 30-year money. 7-1 arms, 2.125. That's pretty amazing. Really, all things considered, that's pretty amazing. Now, it is a 30-year amortization. Yes, it's fixed for seven years, and then after that, it adjusts. Hmm. Now, there are maximum caps, but you can see right here, you're going to be able to save hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars each and every year, hundreds of dollars every single month, tens of thousands of dollars over seven years. All right, here's the whopper. 3.625% for non-owner-occupied financing, no points. That's a wow huge drop huge so if you are looking at or if you thought that you had missed your opportunity to uh to uh, secure that second home or to look at purchasing a rental property hey guess what perfect time absolutely spot on so the government just gave you an early gift wanted to let you know that so if you're on that fence if you are in the mix hey uh, now's the time to take a look at capitalizing because those are awesome rates. All right, let's get into July. July, again, is starting to balance out more like what 2020 looked like so that we're looking at, when we look at 21, you know, 2021 to 2020, that they're consistent. Unlike 2020 looking at 2019, which were inconsistent, okay? Like black and white. There was no yin and yang. Now, we have consistency as far as volume, momentum, interest rates, inventory, okay? And some of our numbers are gonna change accordingly. And you may say, oh my gosh, it's looking bad. No, it's looking, we're looking at something that is more comparable versus something 
that was so polarized different. All right. Okay. So for sale, we're actually up month over month. Okay. Month over month. We're up 37.3% for inventory. That's good. All right. Again, that's July over June. Hmm. All right. New on market, we're down 3.3%. Pended are down 11.2 and sold are down 10.2. Not unexpected. I will tell you, however, and Marie will post the chart. When you take a look at July of 2020 and July of 2021, uh, you know, month to date, right? July 1 to July 16. Can't do today because, hmm, well, it hasn't, it's not over yet. So when we look at those numbers, uh, the 2021 numbers are higher than they were in 2020, which means that we are seeing more activity, more homes coming on market. We still have less inventory. Uh, it looks a lot like this, but just a little bit lower on the, the sold and the pended, but not by much. So year over year, we're still down 20% on our inventory. Okay. That doesn't mean that we are ho -ho, catching up. That just means that we are looking at numbers that are more consistent to each other, to markets that uh, look closer to each other. The however is new on market, 15.8% uh, year over year. And again, the pended matched it. Our inventory, our absorption rate, the number of homes, the number of months available is still at the two week uh, uh, point instead of four to six months. Okay, for those that are new, we have a bucket. And this bucket is called the Northwest MLS, okay? And all of your real estate agents put their listings in this bucket, okay? Now, if I put a cap on this bucket, the inventory inside, we should have four to six months of inventory to sell, okay? I should have four to six months of inventory to sell. That is a balanced market, okay? Now, right now, we're at two weeks. We have two weeks of inventory, that's it. So our inventory is horrifically low. And so when we take a look at, you know, new homes coming on market, when we see that we're up 15.8%, <laughs> that's a that's a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> this we love. That, well, that's starting to balance because you might remember, you know, this was 48, 42, you know, then I think a couple of weeks ago we were at 38 and we said this is going to continue to come down. It's going to continue to normalize compared to where we were last year as those numbers start to balance out. Two markets that are more consistent than they were between 2020 over 2019. Keep that in mind. All right. So pended up 16.7%. We're still 25%, almost 26% more sales year over year. And last year was still a crazy market, which is awesome. Okay. So what are the key differences? And when we take a look at, and when we talk about foreclosures, Okay, so we've had this crazy thing called COVID and it, it, uh, the government stepped in and said, hey, listen, you know, everybody's supposed to stay home uh, except for those that are going to go out and buy a, <laughs> a house. And, you know, to, to help you, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a forbearance, meaning you don't have to make your payments. So you don't have to stress uh, because you have to stay home, which means you really can't work or work is going to be more challenging and some of you are going to get laid off and so you don't have to make your mortgage payment and we're going to do that in six month windows and in fact we're going to give you three six month windows and in fact the the end is july 31st which is in about a little over two weeks or a little under two weeks all right so when we take a look at that that's where a lot of people are looking at say hang on a second here buckaroo there's like three percent of the mortgages that are quote unquote in this forbearance program. That's about 1.8 million people, okay? Now, what's interesting is that in the beginning, some of those folks went into it, and then for a variety of different reasons, some of them good, some of them, well, not so great, okay? But here's what's funny, for the last 14 months, okay? Actually 19 months, the number of people that have been in the forbearance program has been reduced. So for 19, the consecutive last 19 months, we've been reducing the number of people that are in that program, which is good because that means people getting back to work. They figured they realized they didn't need it. They were able to make other accommodations. Maybe they, 
they uh, sold their home, whatever it is, they, they actually did not become part of, you know, what we would consider the forbearance program. Now, with that, there's the looming, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we've got all of these foreclosures that are looming. After July 31st, there's going to like be this mayhem and battle. There's going to be massive default notices sent out, especially, you know, uh, by all of the servicers. Wells Fargo, uh, you know, the uh, Bank of America, your U.S. banks, your Chase banks, all of the big servicers, Nation Star, all of, all of your big servicers. Uh, what is that? Oh, dude, he says, I uh, forgot, you know, I'm not Custer, but <laughs> Carter, Mr. Carter whatever that is, okay? All of these loan servicers are, again, you know, the perception is we're gonna see massive amounts of default because after 90 days, they can say, hey, you're in default and you need to remedy this, okay? Now, the best part is they're pulling that back, all right? So what they have done is they have actually taken steps, okay, and this you might remember when we were back and we were talking about the CFPM, right? That's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And what they've done uh, for mortgages that are held under Freddie, Fannie, or HUD, there's not that many others, right? Okay, that are what we call government uh, qualified loans, all right? These loans actually by the CFPM, they actually created a program or a recommendation uh, that allows people to get out of the forbearance program, whether it's through a loan modification, whether it's through a refinance, doing a 40 year refinance, especially if you're gonna stay in your property and the interest rate cannot go up, ha, huh, right? Uh, plus mitigating some of those fees and things like that to allow people to stay in their home again to help prevent that. Meaning prevent that, meaning that being foreclosure, okay? So if they're able to keep the number of foreclosures, the number of defaults down, which exactly what is happening considering year over year default notices are down 63%. And based on that, because we have uh, statements from B of A, Bank of America, uh, and Wells Fargo and US Bank and some of the other servicers saying, hey, listen, we are following the guidance of David Huejo, Huejo, I think that's how you say his name, uh, he is the acting director at uh, uh, at CFPM, and they know that the the whole intent is to maintain stabilization. Now, is there a cost to that to the feds or to the people? Uh, there is going to be some cost, sure, not like it was in 2008. But here's the biggest thing. Here's the what are the biggest reasons why there's more stability? Why they feel that there's a better opportunity for people? Okay. It's the same reasons that we said, as long as these key features stay in place, interest rates will stay at a below 3.5%, albeit a year from now, I figure we will be closer to 3.5. Here's the biggest one, equity. We didn't have this in 2008 uh, through 2010. No matter what you did, you were chasing the tidy bull man. Uh, you sold your home, guaranteed you were losing money. Why? Because in our area, I'm not talking about some of the more catastrophic areas. It took 60, 70, 80% market hits. You know, we took up to about a 25 less than uh, market hit for values, but this time we have equity, okay? Uh, and there's a, what did they say? Uh, I think it was CoreLogic. Uh, CoreLogic said that U.S. homeowners with mortgages saw almost a 20% year over year increase in their home equity since the first quarter of 2020. Now that's a national statement. That's still pretty impressive. What does that make? Why is that different for us? If you don't have a real estate agent in our state, it still costs you about two and a quarter percent of the sales price to sell your home. Why? Well, the biggest one is the state excise tax. Uh, I sometimes call it the pimp fee, uh, and where they get their monumental amount of dollars for the risk that you took. Uh, we're one of the few states that actually have it uh, with a lot of other taxes. But anyway, get on, I'll get off my, my soapbox there. But, uh, you know, title, escrow, uh, recording fees, again, that big whopper of the excise tax. Okay, those costs, when you take a look at equity, they have the ability to be able to sell and not take a loss. They do not have to do a short sale. You might remember that term, all right? 
Next thing, interest rates. Interest rates. Holy smokes, guys. We're at 2.875. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So interest rates are far better than what they were back in 2008. Inventory. Inventory is horrifically low. Even if we threw, you know, a couple of thousand homes in the market right now, they'd be gobbled up. There is enough pent up demand. I have no doubt they would be gobbled up. I mean, look at this. We had 1,885 new, new listings come on in the last seven days. 2,169 went pended in the last seven days. Okay, well, we went pended more than what came on market. We're still drawing down that inventory. We had 1,650 of those that closed in the last seven days, which is awesome, okay? Now, we come back here, we talk about employment. Employment is on an uptick. <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting, I'm listening to uh, <laughs> both sides of the world out there. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy when we take a look at the absolute uh, really bipolar outlook of 2008 through 2010 versus where we're at today. Again, uh, yes, there's a little bit of government assistance, but assistance not so much in the sense of we're going to bail out, you know, the, the big financials for making bad financial decisions, okay? This time, it's more directly to the people to help them stay in their homes, which is awesome. And that is a great plan. There are different things. If you know of somebody who is in a forbearance program, who might be in a little bit of trouble, uh, or if you are and you are in a forbearance and you have one of these mortgages, hey, listen, we have contact numbers that you need to reach out to for B of A, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, some of the credit unions, some of the other organizations, uh, lenders that are out there. I just don't want to list them all, Chase Bank, so on and so on and so on. Uh, reach out to us. Okay, There's no strings attached. We'll give you the direct contact number that you need to reach out to. Uh, and some of the things that you need to mention, especially in Washington State, so that you can take advantage of these opportunities uh, in uh, this way. Because at the end of July, folks, uh, there are going to be high probability uh, of some folks getting derogatory remarks now on your credit report. Remember, before, you, the, the, the banks were not allowed to give you negative or what we call derogatory reporting if you were in the forbearance program. Okay, as of July 31st, however, that changes. Okay, that changes. And then now they can't start reporting. So you need to make sure that you are now and you have a plan to start making your payments or to start working on a forbearance or to start working on a loan modification or to work on a refinance or the option of selling. Okay, make sure because now it is going to affect your credit. Okay, the uh, the free times are over. Not that they were free, that's a bad thing to say, but understand those are now over. So if you have one of those points of concern, reach out to us. It is confidential. We will get you the information you need to help protect you and your family. No strings attached. All right, so as you can see, we're doing amazingly well. So will foreclosures, do we foresee looming foreclosures having a negative impact? No, why? There's enough programs out there that it should not happen. There's enough equity in your home. It should not happen. Even if you reset things, should not happen. If you want to stay in your home, there's a refinance or a loan modification option. Should not happen. Our market should continue to march forward as planned. Okay? People are, well, they're smart at this time, which is awesome. Well, there's a lot of good things happening. There's a lot of folks on the backside trying to make you successful. Keep that in mind. All right. If you have any questions about this, give me a call. Make sure you subscribe. Share this. Share this information. It is absolutely free. I hope you guys enjoy the cooler weather. <laughs> I know I am. Uh, I don't like East Coast type weather where it's hot, humid, and horrible. <laughs> I like the cooler weather. It's more enjoyable. Anyway, hope you guys stay safe out there. Have an absolutely beautiful weekend, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.